Good morning, my friends. It's Friday morning. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. I'm recording this on Thursday. Uh, one reason is because on Friday I'm scheduled to go in and have some injections in my back. So please pray for me as I go. They're going to put me to sleep to do this, and um, you know I just need your prayers praying for success as well. Uh, also, don't forget, this weekend we got a big day ahead of us on Sunday. What a fantastic day to come and worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords as we continue our Christmas uh, worship. Uh, we've got a special guest, a missionary coming to share with us on Sunday morning. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, so come on out and join us. 845 for Bible study, 10 o'clock for worship. Hope that you'll, you'll be there. If you have your Bibles right now, turn with me again to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to pick up verse 23. You remember what I said yesterday? We're talking about living holy lives. That's, that's important as believers. I mentioned that we are not the Holy Spirit, so our job is to put forth the truth, proclaim the truth. Uh, we don't have to argue. We don't have to debate. We let the Holy Spirit do the convicting. Well, look at what Paul says in verse 23. He says, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Look, you are never going to win somebody to Jesus by arguing with them, calling them names, debating them on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or any of those places. The way that we're going to draw people to Christ is by loving them, standing firm on the truth, not compromising the truth of God's word, but loving people. That's how we do that. That's what Jesus did. Now, there were times when he, he, he debated, he argued, um, well, didn't really argue or debate. He just told the Pharisees what was true and what wasn't. Um, but, you know, we're not Jesus. We're not the Holy Spirit. We have to stand firm. We have to stand strong. But we are also to avoid foolish and ignorant disputes because all that does is it stirs up strife. It causes people to push back. One of the, one of the things that has impacted me most in my ministry was back in the 90s. We were doing a uh, countywide crusade. And the evangelist was Ed Lacey, dear friend of mine, who's gone to be with the Lord this year. Um, but we were doing these countywide crusade, and uh, I was in charge. I was the, the chairman of the committee, and so I was responsible for getting everything done. And we had a new sound guy come in at the last minute. He was lost as he could be. <clears throat> and when it was time to do sound checks, I told him, I said, we need to do the evangelist first so that we can get him back uh, into the room so we can pray. And he did everybody else first. And I, the more he ignored me, the, the, the madder I got, yeah, in the flesh. And I remember just before I went to tell this guy who was writing his check and who was in charge, the evangelist reached over, touched my arm, and said, don't push back. Said, okay. So we got everything done, went to the, uh, the room and had prayer. At the end of the week, guess who made a profession of faith? The sound guy. And I think about that often because had I pushed back, had I started arguing with him, disputing with him, he probably never would have come to know Jesus. What a fantastic uh, lesson to learn. And uh, that's why I don't argue on Facebook. That's why I don't post a bunch of stuff like that on Facebook. But Paul says, avoid these foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. That's the truth. He's not just talking about pastors here. Understand, he's talking about believers. If we want to reach people, we've got to be gentle and loving. Now, for pastors, he says, they have to be able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Do you see that? We have to be patient. Oh, Lord, help me be patient. I, I need that sometimes because sometimes I just want to jump on folks and say, hey, don't you get this? Don't you understand? And in the past, I've done that some, and I've repented, and I've confessed, and God's forgiven me. But here's what we're supposed to do. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. You know why? Because your sin is no bigger than my sin. They're different, but sin is sin. God sees it all the same. And I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. So why would I come to you haughtily to demand that you change your life? I stand on the truth. I teach the, the truth of God's word. I don't compromise, but I have no right to look down on you because of your sin. Instead, I love you, and I'm supposed to love you, and I, I'm called to love you, to, in humility, correct those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance. 
That's the Holy Spirit's job, by the way, not mine. Remember, not the Holy Spirit. You're not the Holy Spirit. We present the truth. We love on people and we let the Holy Spirit do his job. That's a good word from God's word. And I hope that you'll think about that today. Be blessed. Hope to see you on Sunday.